You know what I'm thinking? What's that? I'm thinking faux hawk. Yeah? Did you ever I'm having a tough hair day, by the way. Oh, it goes all around, man. I think, I think everybody's having a tough... <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do, man. I'll cut yours if you cut mine. <laughs> Welcome to Outside the Virus. Uh, first time on YouTube, actually. So uh, we've been doing this show on Instagram. We thought we'd just throw it over to YouTube, see what you guys think. We're talking about things that are uh, things that are happening in the market that are not related to the virus, because that's where the headlines are. And we just kind of want to talk about some other stuff. And uh, as usual, he's got his last minute notes there. Let's see what you got. <laughs> last minute, I came prepared. I'm ready. Oh, yeah. uh, first one I got is Travelers in State Farm are the latest auto insurers to slash premiums and offer refunds to insurance customers as driving volume plunges due to the, you know, everything. So. That, but that's good. Do you see yeah. what uh, Allstate did? Giving back money if you, if, they, if you can show that you're at home and yeah. not traveling as much, they go, well, you don't need insurance as much. We'll give I you think some that's money. great. 60 million bucks, I think. Wasn't there, uh, there was a, maybe it was a State Farm, someone was getting close to almost a billion just completely refunded, which is insane to me. It's great, it's, it's good news, but uh, it's a lot of money. I'm sure they didn't really want to do that. Who, yeah, but it's good publicity, it's good. Yeah. Right, and it's a respectful thing to do. Uh, who do you have? Do you have Geico. all I have Geico. Yeah, they ain't said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, they haven't done anything, have they? <laughs> got nothing, man. I think they sent an email and they're like, hey, we're here for you, but I was like, come on. I keep sitting there, I'm like, eh. No, I'm sure if you ask, they'll do it, but they're not going to do it without. Uh... Well, Allstate has the thing that you sit in your in the app, you put in your car, so they can tell how fast you're yeah, driving and everything. Yeah. I, would you do that? No, really? <laughs> no, I would do that. I mean, I drive pretty slow, but I just yeah, I don't like being tracked, you know. I would do it because then after some time passed, I'd be like, yo, where's my discount? I mean, I know I was driving right, I could show it. Yeah. If, but I'm, I'm assuming they do give you the discount. Anyways, the insurers are lower today. Pretty much everything's a little bit lower today, so yep. good on them. Yeah. Uh, next one, Facebook, uh, the rate, ad rates fell up to 25% uh, in March compared to the previous month. I just thought that was interesting. That's a big number. I'm still seeing a lot of ads, but... Oh, yeah. yeah. I see a ton of ads still. I'm sneaky about my ads. I, I try to get ads to show to me that I want to learn about products. So you're sick. No, I know. For example, <laughs> like if it's like a camera, then I'll go to I'll search that camera and I'll click on the ad and then I'll go back to doing whatever I was doing. Yeah. So later on, when I'm sitting at home, going through Instagram, whatever, there comes the ad and I can learn all about the camera. I uh, so I use True Coach. It's it's an app or whatever, yeah. and uh, I get their ads all the time. Like it's annoying me. It makes it makes me so. I think mad. I got their ads from you linked on my. Phone. It's so gross. I have to cancel just because I'm so mad at what they're doing. It makes me so mad. Yeah. Well, now is it, maybe ads are gonna be cheaper now. Should we advertise uh, what the show? Should we advertise this show on Facebook? Could. You know we've never spent one dollar. No, I, we've never spent a dollar online advertising. Really? We've spent. We did that one TV commercial thing where we met and let, met the yep. lady and she aired the TV commercials. Um, that was it. You know? Wow, I didn't know that. I don't even know how to. Do I that. thought I thought for some reason you did Facebook early on, but I could. Do be you wrong. know how to do that? Facebook ads? Or yeah, any yeah. ads. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's not complicated. I mean, anybody can run an ad, really. Oh. Well, maybe it's cheaper now. Uh, my last one's Amazon. Amazon stopped accepting new online grocery customers amid uh, surging demand, and they're putting uh, applicants on a waiting list. They're also um, adding a crap ton of new employees, but. Uh, that's kind of crazy. You just went from, yeah, you can order online as much as you want, and then they're, no, 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 now you gotta wait. Now you're on a wait list. What's uh, with Amazon and all these products I've never heard of? <laughs> so, that, was, that was your Seinfeld voice. Oh, every day I read something that yeah. Amazon's doing. I'm like, oh, they the thing where they had the button and you would order the uh, detergent. Remember that? Did you ever see that? Nope. So they actually gave you a button. Actually, you might have had to buy the button. And you would just put it on your uh, uh, washing machine and it was the button for whatever detergent you wanted. If it no, was tied, well, you would just go boop, and then the order would trigger automatically. I like that, that's a good idea. Where'd that go? Yeah, I don't know where that was. It was a great idea. You didn't know about the grocery thing? Well, what Wait, they're hold. talking about is actual Amazon grocery. They're not talking about just ordering oh, toilet yeah. paper online. They got that big green van. Did you see the big green van? We I've don't have those around. We don't have them around here, oh. but uh, mm -hmm. yeah, they got this massive green van. It's like the blue ones that we have around here, but they're green for groceries. We could do a whole did you know about Amazon. There's a lot going on there. Uh, there. Did you know that they have a cashierless store? Many of them now. Uh, in New York, right? Isn't that where they started? Seattle, I remember that a while ago. Uh, all through Washington, I believe. Yeah. Just walk in, grab what you want, and leave. That's nuts. I like it. That's the future. Did you know they own Whole Foods? Uh, I did know that, actually. That one I did know. There's like so many stupid... I, I, I like Amazon. I'm a, I'm a fan-ish of Amazon. I don't get it. But anyway, that's all I got for uh, my Outside the Virus news today. All right, uh, I got a few things here. Uh, you may know last week uh, was the biggest week, well, 
one of the biggest weeks in the stock market in terms of returns, 12.1%. Uh, for the week. Uh, it was the seventh biggest week overall. How do I know that? Because we put that in our notes from Jazz email to customers. We actually went through all the other 10 uh, biggest weeks in the stock market to show the performance overall. I point that out because Goldman Sachs says, this is Goldman Sachs, this is not me. Goldman Sachs says, remember that March 23rd low in the stock market? That's the bottom. Oh wow. They said that's the bottom. They put together three things they sent out to their customers. Um, we get all this stuff, so I just try to point out all the kind of stuff that they're sending to their really rich people. Um, they, so they got a list of three things. Number one, the slowing viral spread, which is technically virus related. Yeah. Uh, two, evidence that fiscal and monetary policy stimulus is working, which is essentially what the government is doing with the checks they're giving out and what the Fed is doing with the trillions and trillions of dollars they're just throwing around. Uh, and then three, a bottoming in investor positioning and flows, which just means the amount of money going into mutual funds and ETFs versus coming out. So they said, you can expect a sharp economic recovery and the S&P will be back to 3,000 by the end of the year. 3,000 as of where we're at now puts you like eight or 9% higher. See how I did that? Yeah, I did, I like that, that was good. Eight or 9% uh, <laughs> higher than where we're at, at least as of today. So there you go. You think it's the low? No, but because I listen, I hear, I hear things and- in... I'll tell you what though, that's what they say. For every one of them, there's someone on the other side saying this this is going to be a catastrophe. Yeah, yeah, and I've read uh, they were uh, there was someone last week that said we're nowhere close to the bottom. Like, yeah, so no, I don't I don't think so. You but. have one of the Fed presidents out there saying we are going to have rolling shutdowns for the next 18 months. Yeah. So then, in that case, we wouldn't be at the bottom. I don't think that. Yeah. You shut down part of this country one more time. Yeah. That's nasty. Yeah. I don't know. Anyways, that was that one. Uh, moving on to Disney. Uh, wouldn't be right if we didn't talk about Disney. That's three straight shows. I think we're three straight. This is gross, but go ahead. God bless these people when Disney actually opens back up. Oh, <laughs> That's all they're going to hear. Uh, Disney, we're going to pop up a chart in here somewhere. Um, broke down. Uh, I'll show this on the closing beat later too, but we broke down Disney's um, revenue by segment. So Disney has four different segments since they went and did this new Disney Plus thing and uh, they just hit 50 million paid subscribers. So analysts are pretty much positive on uh, Disney here despite they're having all their theme parks closed. Yeah. So I'll let you see it while you're here and then you can pop it up. Uh, theme parks, what percentage of their revenue does theme parks make up? Disney percentage of revenue by category. Uh huh. So they have four parks, different segments. 34.91%. Yes, about 35% of their revenue, which is the majority, uh, it's their biggest category almost, or pretty much, uh, from theme parks. You know what you just did? I said almost. <laughs> no, 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 no. What you just did was you went classic teacher mode where teacher's teaching in class. And they get <laughs> students not paying attention and they go, like, what's the answer? But the answer's right in front uh, of you, but it makes you re-engage. I, I was here, I was listening and you just. Oh, no, I just thought you want to see, you know, just say, see what's going right, on. I will never forget in high school, one of the smartest kids I knew, he was sleeping and he started snoring. No. And they were going through some geometry thing and I didn't even know what was going on on the board. And I'm staring this lady through the back of her head. And I'm watching and she goes, Chris? And he looks up and he just kind of goes, three eye. <laughs> oh right man. I'm like, oh my God, you did. That's how you know you're a little behind. Yeah, but anyways, um, so Look. biggest percent of their revenue yeah. comes from their parks. However, the far right one is direct consumer. That's where the Disney Plus category fits in. Disney Plus is a new category for them. They do 50 million paid subscribers. If that even, if they can even hold on to some of those, uh, that boosts their direct to consumer category up. Very much like Apple. Apple was hardware, selling iPhones and computers and things. And then all the way over here was this services category, which is essentially what this is. And it was next to nothing. Now for services for Apple is pretty substantial. I think it's 22, 24% somewhere in there. Because now you've got an iPhone, you buy an app, you use the arcade, you got the TV, you do all this stuff, you give them five or six bucks a month. So that's what Disney's trying to do. 50 plus million subscribers brings up their direct to consumer category, which means and all the analysts are saying this, uh, that their parks being closed isn't really gonna be that big of a deal being closed for a month and a half or so. Yeah. Cool, huh? Yeah, that's interesting. What's, so, yeah? I'm just looking at the chart, I'm just confused on the difference between uh, studio entertainment and direct-to-consumer if Disney Plus is in direct-to-consumer. Studio entertainment is uh, the movies that they make. Uh, that wouldn't, oh. Okay. Frozen 2, things like that, which to me, last year they had seven billion, seven individual movies that did at least a billion dollars. Ah. Yeah. So that's 15%? That shows you how much those parks make, huh? Yeah, that's pretty wild. Um, anyways, that's that one. And lastly, uh, we've got Tillman Fertitta. You know Tillman Fertitta? Nope. 
Oh, you would know him. If you watch CNBC, he's, uh, he did a show for a while with them where he was like investing in companies. He owns the Golden Nugget Casino. Yep. And he owns Landry's, which is a chain of restaurants. Yeah. Think uh, um, Rainforest Cafe, Morton's, uh, Bubba Gump down the road there. Yeah. He owns all of those. And uh, so obviously casinos and restaurants, that's yeah. like the two worst businesses you can be in right now. Oh. He is offering $250 million in debt for 15% yield. Meaning he's going to pay you 15% a year for $250 million in debt. Yet another story of corporations issuing debt at ridiculously high rates. Not that he's in any trouble either. He's putting in 50 million of his own dollars to back it up. You're getting some of his gaming assets in the event that they do go bankrupt. You're not going to just lose out on the 250 million bucks. And um, this debt, by the way, 15%, he guarantees he will pay 15% for a minimum of two years. He cannot pay this loan back early uh, after two years. It goes to 2023, but uh, 15%. Wow. I'm just, I'm baffled by the 2023 part. That part's pretty crazy to me. I thought that would go for a little bit longer. That'd be stretched out. 2023? He's, look, if you ever watched it, he's a cool character. Like as yeah. a CEO, he's very Southern. He's got that kind of accent. He's a tough guy, uh, but he's in a tough position. So that's what he's doing there. I just think it's fascinating. You had Carnival Cruise out there. You had hotel brands. They're all issuing more debt at these record rates and it's getting gobbled up. I mean, by the time we talk about this, it's already gone. I mean, people are willing to pay that yeah. uh, for these rates there. Wow. Um, and then I'll leave it with this. Uh, I know it's gone a little long, but uh, Friday, the FinTips video on YouTube, which goes up at one o'clock on Friday, is gonna be answering the question from a statistical standpoint, should you buy stocks that are getting government assistance? Like the government is giving money to American Airlines. They're probably gonna give money to Carnival Cruise Lines. Should you buy those stocks because they're getting assistance? We're gonna go through the stats and go through previous stocks that got government assistance and show uh, their performance immediately after getting assistance and we'll stretch it out and show, was that a worthwhile investment or would you have been better off just buying the market? It's a cool video. That's geeky stuff, right? Yeah, All that right. one's in depth. I like uh, it. So we'll do that on Friday. I will tease it probably a few more times. Cool. All right, let us know what you think of the Outside the Virus show. Anything we should talk about tomorrow, we're going to do this every single day. Uh, enjoy. Oh yeah, that was a long one. How long? <laughs>